There's not a lot else to say about the third game. The training area is pretty good. And you can actually properly practice sneaking outside of the regular levels, which is just not something you can really say for the first two. There is also this nice feature where you can like wound someone and they'll be lying on the ground. Um, you know, not although it really doesn't impact the hole that much. There's a pretty solid amount of freedom to the levels. Every mission is now entirely separate from the others. The weapon loadout is excellent again, though there aren't a lot of bladed weapons for some reason. And like in the second one, you can gather them all, and there are bonus weapons if you get the sound assassin rating. Also, this one actually shows on what the best rating you got for a mission was. And that brings me to Hitman Blood Money. This one is a major upgrade to the rest of the series. You get an immense amount of freedom in this one. Every single mission has multiple ways of completing it. And it's not like, you know, you try out the sucky ones, then you find the good one. There are several good ones for all of them. You now have more than one target in every single mission and the camera is as close to completely free I mean you can turn it and literally be watching 47 from like down below as he's walking and the directional keys are affected by it so if the camera is in front of you you have to press downwards to walk ahead and such but it feels very natural and the camera never changes without you changing it so you'll never accidentally suddenly be walking in the wrong direction you get a coin that you can throw um, to distract. You get this remote control mine that has a lot of uses. You can use it to like make a chandelier fall onto someone. Or you can stick in the suitcase. You can again collect all the weapons. And this time you can also upgrade the main one, including a handgun, a shotgun, I think two submachine guns, and an assault rifle. Oh, and a sniper and you can't only like upgrade them some of the stuff is like specific and rules out other stuff you can buy different kinds of ammunition and some of them like go through a door you can also now push people and a lot of people just use this to like push people down the stairs what's really cool though is you can also push people out from like if they're standing on a balcony you know push them over and that's another one of the really cool things in this game you can stage accidental deaths like you know make it look like a suicide or make it look like you know something that could happen like the chandelier falling on someone the weapon loadout is again great and the graphics are much much better than before the story is pretty cool even if it doesn't necessarily go to all the places you might like it to I'm not sure it entirely utilizes all its potential. The levels are great, though they now take place almost exclusively in the United States, so it's not as exotic or exciting. With that said, I mean, you get to visit the Rocky Mountains, and one of the levels is, in my opinion, one of the very best of the entire series. It's this suburb. I mean, what better place for, you know, an insidious hit on someone, you know, suburbia. Where could it possibly be cre The AI is a lot better. Enemies will now actually like track you by blood, and if they find you know some blood on the ground, they'll actually deduce someone died here. You know, someone got shot or stabbed or something. The music is yet again excellent. In the third one, it was kind of like psychological, like you know, seven-ish, you know, psychological thriller kind of thing. In this one, it's bombastic and operatic, and it perfectly and it fits perfectly. You can't make me go in there! Yes. So that's the game franchise, at least so far. I guess I'll throw in a review of the film as well. I'll start off by saying... Yeah, they had their work cut out for them. It was always gonna be a challenge. The thing is, even back in the first one, there was a lot of shooting along with these stealthy killings. So no matter how the movie turned out, you know, there were people that were going to be unhappy with it. You know, too much or too little action. And I will definitely say there are moments where they pretty much nail it. Like the way um, 47 moves at at least one point is really good. And I think if you just take it as a hollow, superficial action flick, it should entertain to a certain extent. I mean, the action itself is not too bad, but for any fan, it is a letdown. 
I think Oliphant does a pretty good job. I'm not sure he was really the right guy, though. I just don't think he has the gravitas, the... I don't know if the word charisma applies. There were a lot of suggestions of, like, you know, Jason Statham. I think I heard someone mention Bruce Willis. A lot of people were campaigning for David Bateson, you know, the voice of 47 in the games. I don't know, I don't know if there is an actor who would have been absolutely perfect. With Bateson, you would have at least have had the exact right voice. But on the whole, I think they needed someone who made a stronger, immediate impression than Oliphant. And someone who looks good bald, which I'm not entirely sure Oliphant really did. With that said, I mean, they made the look work somewhat. I mean, if you think, you know, bald white guy in a black suit with a red tie, that can look really silly and stupid. Absolutely ridiculous, at worst. And I think they made it work, you know. I didn't hear anybody giggle when they saw him. It was cool to see uh, Ulrich Thompson, uh, a Danish actor. But I gotta say, I think it's one of his least memorable performances. And the same goes for Robert Knepper, I don't know how to pronounce it, who I love on Prison Break. He made so little of an impression in this film. I think I remember who he was, but I'm not really sure. And it's not that long ago since I watched it, and I think he has a pretty big role in it. Other than that, I just think it took too many of the crass elements. I think it was around the third game. It got to be kind of crude at points, and the movie uses some of that, and there really wasn't a lot of the sophistication, the precision in the movie. And I'm really not sure he really felt like 47, like the proper 47. And then there's, of course, you know, Olga Kurilenka in there. I don't have a problem with the woman, and it's not the only movie that she's been added to so that there could be something for us young males to gawk at. Not even the only video game adaptation, you know, there was also Max Payne. But she does drag it down some, and her role there as lowest common denominator is just... I don't even think that they made any attempt to hide it, or to make it seem like her presence really had some kind of purpose to the overall film. But yeah, you know, some golden moments, but on the whole, disappointing for fans, and maybe decent, passable for people who just want a straight action flake with some TNA.